Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Global Business Summit on Education. Uh, my name is Michael Burke. I'm your facilitator for today. Um, I work for the BBC, which confers a very spurious uh, kind of fame. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I jumped into a taxi just up the road here uh, and said, take me to Heathrow. And the taxi driver said, go on, mate, give me a clue. And, uh, and I said, well, I'm on television a bit. No, no, mate, no. Uh, the news, you know, no, 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 no. Well, I do quite a bit of radio, maybe it's the voice. No, 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 mate, no. Uh, well, I write stuff for the papers. You might have seen the picture in the paper. No, no, mate, no, which terminal? <laughs> I, spent, um, I spent many, uh, many years as a foreign correspondent for the BBC, working in more than 60 countries. And no matter how remote the places I visited, there was always a demand for good education and practical skills. How best to meet that global demand and ensure high quality standards is the key theme for today. And the diversity and the authority of the speakers today brings to life the importance of the education sector to the economy as a whole. We not only have professors and education experts, but also athletes, global business leaders and sustainability specialists. We also have a truly global audience. Delegates have come from as far away as uh, Australia and Azerbaijan, from Iraq and India, the West Indies, even West London. Just some of the questions that we'll be tackling today. How is technology transforming global education? What are the main trends and challenges for education professionals? And to what extent can enterprise be embedded in curriculum? Before I introduce you to our formal host for the day, uh, a few housekeeping, necessary housekeeping announcements. Please do switch off all your electronic devices to silent. I won't tell you uh, what draconian punishments there are for not doing so, but perhaps the nooses hanging on the lampposts outside will give you a clue. If a fire alarm sounds, this is a statement of the obvious here, please follow the instructions of the staff. Uh, please be aware that today's events are being recorded and some may be broadcast live to other venues. If you have a chance to walk around the house, you'll already have seen how magnificent it is. Uh, Queen Victoria uh, once came here for a ball and famously said to the Duchess of Sutherland, uh, who uh, lived in the house at the time, I've come from my home to your palace. Uh, you'll see that as you look around that Lancaster House has been transformed into an embassy that truly showcases the United Kingdom as a creative and innovative place to do business. The arch you'll see has been rehung to include people like Grayson Perry, Damien Hurst and Bridget Riley and more. The furniture, lighting, crafts and accessories have been generously provided by the UK's leading creatives including War Thistleton, who've designed the pavilion you've probably already seen that leads to the garden in which you'll be uh, having coffee later on. Please do use your Samsung tablets to find out more information about the products on display around Lancaster House. We've got a lot to get through before that, before coffee, so straight away let me introduce you to your formal uh, host for the day. Uh, Lord Green of Hurstpier Point, Minister of State for Trade and Investment. Lord Green. Michael, thank you very much, and I'd like to add my welcome to everybody. It's great to have so many people from so many different parts of the world right here in Lancaster House as we celebrate a business Olympics alongside the real Olympics down the road. Uh, welcome, therefore, to a house which we have, as Michael has just said, uh, equipped with both uh, the, the very most striking leading 21st century examples of British creativity in a setting which is a wonderful uh, piece of architecture from the 1820s. I can't think of a better way of linking tradition uh, uh, with the modern in a great theme of continuity. Uh, which is, is of course partly what education is about. Part, education is about equipping us for the 21st century world and rooting us in human tradition so that we understand about values. Uh, we've done a, uh, what's described in my text here is a complete makeover of this building. Wallace and Gromit here, Bridget Riley downstairs, Thomas Heatherwick in the 200-year-old hall. Um, but in a sense, it's not a complete makeover. What it is is blending old and new in that continuous theme of creativity, which is so important to education. 
Indeed, the theme of the Olympics is inspiring a generation, of course, uh, inspiring a generation through sports, but we all know that inspiring a generation and equipping a generation for life is about education very critically. And so uh, we're looking today at the whole question of how you capture the attention of young people so that they equip themselves through the education process with the life skills needed for the 21st century world. The 21st century world is a world where globalization continues apace. Nothing that has happened in the last four years of financial crisis and economic turmoil has derailed that process of globalization. It is continuing, and by the way, the center of gravity is shifting from west to east and from north to south, and therefore whether you're a government or a business or a young person, you have to think about your strategy for dealing with the modern world. And so how do we encourage young people to stay at school? How do we get them to study the subjects they need to equip themselves for modern life, even if they're not particularly popular when you're a young teenager? Science and technology, for instance. This matters in every country in the world. It matters to us in the UK. Getting education right is central to our strategy for economic growth on a sustained basis, just as it is central to any other country's strategy for sustained economic growth. Last week, uh, we kicked off this business embassy here in Lancaster House with around 200 of the world's leading chief executives present at a global investment conference. Countries around the world compete for investment from these firms, and a key factor in their decisions on where they're going to locate businesses and operations is whether they're able to find pools of gifted, talented, motivated staff. We think we have a good story to tell in the UK, but we know also uh, that we've got a lot to do. We have four out of the top ten universities of the world. We have very strong research and development. We've had uh, increasing success in the last few years with apprenticeships, although we know we've got a long way to go on that and that we have to stick at it. We know in general that education is critical if we're to maintain standards of competitive excellence. What's true for us in the UK is true for the countries represented in this room as well as, of course. Investment is one side of the coin from my point of view. Trade is the other. Trade depends on competitive excellence. Trade depends on having the right skills. In the end, it is a skillful nation that will succeed in the world at large. Education itself, of course, is a trade opportunity. Our education system is very highly regarded. Indeed, we're second only to the United States in the number of international students that we attract. Some 10% of the international student market comes to the UK. And that market itself is growing very fast, as, of course, is the student market itself. UNESCO estimates that by 2025, there will be 260 million students worldwide. Currently, we in Britain earn over £14 billion in educational exports, of which over half, just over half, comes from higher education. We think this figure could go higher yet, and that's one of my preoccupations, which is why I welcome new moves announced today by New College Nottingham, the University of Salford, Liverpool City College, all to increase their international engagement. They are ample proof that British educational institutions can go overseas and succeed in the global education market. This education impetus that we're going to pay a lot of attention to is important not only in terms of narrow foreign exchange earnings, it is also much more important and more fundamentally uh, a source of long-term relationship building. We believe, I believe, very strongly that if you want to engage successfully with the rest of the world, and that goes for whether you're a country or a business or an individual, it is making those links at the time of education which last a lifetime, which is so critical to long-term success. This is a message that's not needed by Olympians, who we're very lucky to have with us today. In 1985, Steve Cram, MBE, or the Chancellor of the University of Sunderland, as he now is, broke three world records in 19 days. And at the Barcelona Games, it was Sally Gunnell who claimed the gold in the 400 metres hurdles. Thank you both for coming. Thank you both for spending time on what is for us so important. 
But our first guest this morning, Sir Michael Barber, is one of the world's leading authorities on education systems and on educational reform. He's enjoyed a distinguished career in both the public and private sectors, and I'm really delighted, Michael, that you've agreed to speak to us this morning. Albert Einstein once said that education is what remains after one forgets what one has learned at school. I hope that today is educational and informative, and I wish us all a really constructive as well as a pleasant time here today. Most of all, I'd like you to take home with you a long-lasting impression of the scale of opportunities that there are internationally and with the knowledge that the department that I'm responsible for, UK Trade and Investment, is very focused on education as well as on all the other sectors of economic activity that we're responsible for because we regard education as so critical and so fundamental to all of the rest. Michael, without further ado, can I invite you to take the stand. Thank you.